Okay, so let's see how we go about computing the integral of the cosecant cubed function, cosecant cubed of x, with respect to x. The first thing I've got to emphasize here is this is not just a case of using a power rule where we just increase the power by 1 and divide by the new power because we have a function here, a trigonometric function, and we're raising it to the power of 3. Now it also happens that all powers of trigonometric functions have reduction formulas when it comes to their integrals. But let's be a bit smarter than that in this video. Let's reserve the mechanical power reduction formulas to higher powers of this function because we can still achieve this integral and enjoy a sense of satisfaction with it being a power of 3. Now my approach to integration, the first thing I look for is, is there a simplification? Can I use a bit of algebra to simplify the integrand? And for this one, no I can't. The next question is, is there an obvious substitution? And again, we can't simplify any further with a substitution. So the next question is, can I use a strategy like integration by parts? Okay, so if I do use a bit of algebra, let's write the cosecant cubed of x as being equal to the cosecant of x by the cosecant squared of x. So this is just using our index rules. And now applying the integral to both sides, the integral of cosecant cubed of x is equal to the integral of the cosecant of x by cosecant squared of x. So to apply integration by parts, we can let u equal the cosecant of x. We can let dv equal the cosecant squared of x. And by the way, the rule for integration by parts is the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. So if we have the expression u equals the cosecant of x, we have to find an expression for du. So if we take the derivative of the cosecant of x with respect to x, we get... I'll link it in the top right hand corner here or you'll find the link in the description below. The result is negative cosec x by cotangent of x. And uh, we can separate the differential by moving dx to the top on the right hand side. Now for dv equals cosec squared of x dx. To get v we integrate and what I'm going to do is write this function here, this negative cosec squared, as negative negative, so a double negative. So I can group one of the negatives with cosec squared of x. Because the integral of negative cosec squared of x is equal to the cotangent of x. So that's this guy integrated, and I've just got to carry this negative in the front here. Okay, so now that we have all of our parts, we can apply integration by parts. So we say the integral of cosec cubed of x dx is equal to u, which is cosec x, by v, which is negative cotangent of x, minus the integral of v negative cot x by du, which is negative cosec x cot x. So we can simplify this secondary integral here because a negative and negative when multiplied together cancel to become a positive. We can combine these two into cot squared of x so we're left with the integral of cot squared of x by cosec of x dx. Now we can get rid of this cot squared term by using a Pythagorean identity. So if we remember that cos squared of x plus sine squared of x is equal to 1. So this is the Pythagorean identity. If I divide all of the terms by sine of x, sorry sine squared of x,
the Pythagorean identity becomes cot squared of x. So cosine squared divided by sine squared is the cotangent squared. Sine squared divided by sine squared equals 1. And 1 over sine squared of x is the cosec squared of x. Now this purple is doing my head in. Uh, let's change colors. So I can rearrange this as cot squared of x is equal to cosec squared of x minus 1. So now if we substitute this cot squared term, we have cosec squared of x minus 1 by cosec of x, and it's the integral of that term. We can expand this cosec into the parentheses, and that gives us the integral of cosec cubed of x minus cosec of x dx. Okay, so the secondary integral has turned into that. Let's copy down the rest of the terms. So we've got the negative in front of the integral. We've got negative cosec x by cot x at the front. And we've got the integral of cosec cubed of x on the other side. And before we go further, we can separate this integral into two. So if we multiply the negative in, we'll have minus of the integral of cosec cubed of x and dx plus the integral of cosec of x dx. So we've got a funny situation here where the integral of cosec cubed of x is equal to something minus itself and then something else. But to deal with that, what we can do is move this term to the other side. And when it goes to the other side, it becomes a plus. So what we have is, after moving it, we have 2 times the integral. So it's the integral of cosec cubed of x plus the integral of cosec cubed of x, which of course equals 2 times the integral of cosec cubed of x, is equal to negative of cosec of x by cot of x plus the integral of cosec of x dx. Okay, let's deal with this integral now because in a previous video I have covered this as well. I'll point you to a link in the top right hand corner here or it'll be in the description below. But this integral evaluates to negative of the natural log of cosecant of x plus cotangent of x. All right, so twice the integral of cosec cubed of x dx is equal to negative cosec of x by cot of x. And to deal with this 2 on the left-hand side, all I do is multiply everything by half. So we say that the integral of cosec cubed of x dx is equal to negative a half of cosec of x by cot of x minus a half of the natural log of cosec x plus cot x. And of course, let's not forget the integration constant plus c. Okay, so let's box this result. And you can put this in your table of integrals. Okay, so that'll conclude this tutorial. I hope you have found it useful. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to express them in the comment section below. Check out my channel for hundreds of other tutorials to help you with your studies. Till next time, best of luck. I'll see you on the next video.